Hey guys, it's your girl Queen Joe here. Welcome back to Q3. It's episode four. This is the finale of my life story. <laughs> I should have brought a horn. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so I'm wrapping it up to you today, guys. I'm not gonna be. I've been talking about myself all day. Me, 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 me. My transition story. My labor story. My business story. Right. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I save all the best for last for y'all. This is the tea episode. I'm gonna tell y'all about all my boyfriends, y'all. <laughs> It sound crazy. I had to force. I was like, oh, I'm finna talk about this. But we gonna do it. We gonna do it. That's why I saved. That's really why I put it last, y'all. Because I was like, I don't know. I didn't really know how to talk about it. But here we go. Here we are. We finna discuss my love life. All right? So I'm gonna tell y'all about the things. I did like a little highlight is what I did. So I'll tell y'all about my first three boyfriends. Because I feel like those three guys like shaped the rest of my dating life right so i'm gonna talk about them and then i'll touch base on my baby daddy <laughs> i'm gonna touch base on my baby daddy and i'm gonna tell y'all some a little bit more stuff but that's it and then i'll wrap up this episode i'm gonna keep it short and sweet i always say that and then i feel like i go over the time <laughs> but i'll try to keep it short and sweet for y'all all right so my very first boyfriend guys uh okay so I started dating in high school. My very first boyfriend was like probably I'll say like the in the freshman year, sophomore year. Around that time I got over the whole bullying thing, y'all. <laughs> I got over it. I did my adopting. I was good. Now um I started doing the whole dating thing, right? So I'm a teenager, you know, I'm a young pretty girl. So a lot of guys looking at me. So I started talking to this uh one guy. A fairly nice guy at the beginning he's very nice and we're talking you know i'm a teenager so this is my first uh relationship my first experience of dating so you know me and the guy are talking a couple months go by we start arguing and we will argue we'll argue and for me i was there was nothing to me at the time it's just you know i'm a teenager this is my first experience so this is normal so we're arguing it went from like um verbal arguments then it got physical so it got crazy <laughs> like i said this was normal to me at the time because it was my first relationship but it got crazy y'all like this man used to beat me up for anything and i i said he would he beat me up because he won the fight but i also like to say that i was fighting back <laughs> not that there's any smiling to that situation but that man he it was taking him a while to to pin me down stuff like that so we was fighting like i'm saying we was fighting we dated for like a year a little over a year and it was legit like fighting and arguing and fighting and arguing we would break things in his mother house like it it was crazy so relationship i remember actually I remember one time he used to be me because he would he would hit me in public too. So one time I remember we was in the park and I came to the he he was in the park and I came there met him there and I had lip gloss on because um summertime I'm outside I got lip gloss I'm a teenager so I had lip gloss on. This man went ballistic. But here's the funny thing I remember about this is that every time he would hit me in public, he would do it junk jokingly. So it didn't look like he was really hitting me. But when I really think about the situation, I'm like, that man was hitting me. I remember him actually, like, legit dragging me at one point, like, making fun of it, making it look light. But that was that was not the best experience. So I went through that, and um, like I said, I thought it was normal. It was all like a big joke to me. Like I said, he made fun of it when he did it in public. When we argued privately, it was different. He, he, you know, we were fighting, fighting, was breaking things. But to me, all of that was normal. I didn't think of anything. I didn't think about it, double think about it at all <laughs> until the relationship was over. It lasted like a little over a year. So the relationship is over. And, you know, months go by. I'm chilling with my cousin, and um, I remember we was watching this um, TV show. Me and my cousin was watching the Tyra Banks show, because I'm, I'm a teenager. This is back in the days when, when Tyra's show was popular, and we, we we used to watch that show. That was one of actually one of my favorite shows. And I was actually, I was we was actually on that show at one point. I don't remember what year, but I used to be part of a dance company, and my dance company went on the Tyra Banks show. So that was, we love Tyra. That was one of one of my favorite shows. Me and my cousin always watched the show. So this one day, we were watching the Tyra Banks show, and she got guests on the show, y'all. And the guest on the show is from a DV shelter. 
Um, so the guest on the show was talking about um, domestic violence, DV is domestic violence. So she's giving examples, um, you know, she's showing videos, the guest is talking, showing videos, showing pictures of um, examples of domestic violence, like in different situations. So domestic violence in relationship and like between husband and wife, between parents and kids and it was she it wasn't it wasn't like narrowed down it was very broad but the whole um thing was domestic violence and for me like that was actually like the first time so i'm watching the show with my cousin and me and my cousin looking at the show and i turned to my cousin i'm like yo that's the situation that i just got out of isn't that what this lady talked about so i had like <laughs> i had like this epiphany moment while me and my cousin watching the show we both actually had the moment together because me and my cousin was real tight back then um so when i was dating this guy i think at one point he would beat her up too even at one point not hit beat her up but he would do little like little funny things little funny hitting things but it was at a point where we both looked at each other and she could relate to what i was getting to like we had the epiphany together like yo you was just in that kind of relationship right so the whole this the relationship is over now <laughs> it's like months after i broke up with the boy when i actually discover how bad it was so there's nothing i didn't know what it was happening during the relationship so but the minute i saw that show like till this day y'all that sh that has never left me that has never left my head i told like the difference in relationship like what is a healthy relationship and what is a domestic violent relationship because like the, i remember the show showed all different kinds of like uh violent or abuse because i believe people highlight abuse as just like physical but i remember that day the show was very detailed as far as like uh verbal abuse mental abuse physical abuse like the lady broke down everything and like till this day <laughs> till this day i still have to show in my head i still remember that i caught on to that moment i never let go of it but like i said i couldn't do anything about it then it was just something that i took with me for the rest of my life so moving forward i already i, I knew that i never forgot that so after um a couple of months i actually started talking to um talking to his friend the boy <laughs> i started talking to my ex uh my first boyfriend his friend i started talking to the guy because he was real nice y'all and why not i was a little petty but whatever it, <laughs> it wasn't like his friend friend though it wasn't like they were like friending me you know those they like cool but they're not really that cool kind of thing so me and the boy started talking there's like maybe like um a little ending school probably like my junior year going into my senior year and the boy was in front of me actually he was older upper in class so um they both were actually so me and the boy started talking and i didn't get to discuss this whole epiphany thing with my first boyfriend because i realized what happened after the relationship was over so i, d I when i started talking to his <laughs> i just lost my ring <laughs> when i started talking to his friend y'all i was so like i understood what i was getting into now so i was prepared for everything so i started asking his friend like you know a little little boyfriend girlfriend's pillow talking i'm like yeah so your man's <laughs> what's good with your man's he be beating on girls and stuff you that was good y'all y'all all be doing that stuff <laughs> I remember having a conversation. The boy like, yeah, he be doing that. He be <laughs> his friend agreed with me that he was a white beater, and he. And the boy actually told me he's like that. They try like his friends try to tell him about it, but he gets all these girls, and that's not something he was even listening to every time somebody tried to tell him like, don't beat on girls or nothing. That wasn't something that he was trying to listen to. And actually, the relationship ended with him because he was also a cheater. So the the domestic violence thing was a whole nother thing, a whole nother just personal discovery of mine. But he was also like a huge womanizer. So he had a whole bunch of girls coming up to me, trying to argue with me, trying to fight me. So I wasn't even um feeling all of that. So that's why that relationship ended. So then when I started talking to his friend, it was just a whole different um experience y'all like the, he told me he told me he wasn't gonna beat me because i asked him from like day one i asked him I'm like, is you finna hit me because i am not going through that again like what is going on right now i know now i know this is not something if i knew i would have asked my first boyfriend that but this is not something now i know what i'm getting into so i asked him he said nah i'm good i don't hit women and blah 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 and we talked we talked for a couple of months and then he graduated school went to college and that was over but he didn't hit me 
the whole time we were talking he was actually very very nice he was, it was a very cool experience and it was great to experience right after you know after leaving his friend like i saw like the uh, like a balance of like a healthy relationship and a not healthy relationship right so immediately my first two try at the whole dating thing i already grasped <laughs> pretty much everything i needed to know i knew nobody finna hit me nobody finna cuss me out every day nobody finna try to play mind games with me because that's mental abuse you know what i mean so i understood everything so then my by the time i got to my third boyfriend I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. And fortunately for me, though, that I did not have to prepare myself for. I did not have to be ready too much for him because it was actually my third boyfriend was my best experience, I'll say. Not overall, of course, but that was the best experience. That's why I chose to highlight those three people. But the third one, he was so kind. He was so sweet, y'all. It was so amazing. And we dated for six years, y'all, all the way up to I graduated high school, went to my first couple of years of college. He was the sweetest. I'm telling y'all, he was so lovely. He was the kindest soul. I learned so much from this kid. He was so cool. And it was he was cool up until the breakup y'all like <laughs> y'all know breakup be nasty you know we always like cussing each other out and all that stuff but this breakup was actually so sweet like my third boyfriend we dated for six years and at the end of the six years we both like we both realized like yo we're we love each other but we're not in love with each other anymore like yeah <laughs> we had like a little epiphany i remember too we was like yo yeah that's true because you know it, it started dying down we started getting to the point where we would want to see each other and then when we chill it would just be nothing like nothing productive or the vibe just wasn't there anymore so it was like you cool the whole time we've been dating you've been cool to me i've been cool to you so we love each other right for that reason but we're not in love anymore so then um as time went by he actually took the um i guess the the and he was a bigger person <laughs> he took the lead um to break up with me and i still remember this breakup to this day uh like i'm telling y'all so sweet this guy <laughs> He wrote a whole speech for me, y'all. We dated for six years, and this man wrote a speech to me telling me how amazing I am. Like, I'm telling y'all, he told me I was, like, he, it was just laid out all about me. Like, I'm so great. I'm the best thing that ever happened to him. I'm just, I'm always doing great things. I am a queen. I should never forget it. I should always hold my head up. I should always keep going. And the reason he believes that we have to break up at that time was that because he he believed that he hadn't um figured himself out yet so to say so his whole thing was he needed to do self-discovery like he needed to figure out what he wanted in life and all these things and it seemed like i had it all together i don't think i did at the time but you know that, i think that's a female thing we just seem like we have it figured out right <laughs> so he was like you know what i mean he didn't he was like he didn't want to hold me back that was his main thing. He was like, I don't want to hold you back because, like, the six years we've been dating, I've seen you do so many great things with your life. Like, every day is, like, a new adventure for you, and I don't want to hold you back from doing any of those great things while I'm trying to figure out myself. And to this day, I thought that was, like, the sweetest thing. I didn't think it was sweet at the time, y'all. I was like, what? You breaking up with me? <laughs> I was like, what? You can't break up with me and be nice? I was actually mad at the time when he was breaking up with me. I remember I was so pissed. I was like, no, this is not how breakup work. You have to cuss me out. You have to be mad at me. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Who does that? Who break up with somebody and be nice and sweet? Like, I still love you. How am I supposed to not love you? You're still sweet to me. Like, it was so crazy, right? But I think now, and I'm looking back at it, so many years have gone by, I still think that was actually the best thing he did for me. And like I said, I was so mad, actually, guys. Let me tell y'all, I didn't even accept it, the speech. The first time this boy made his whole speech to me, I didn't accept it. I was like, no, no, I love you. We're not breaking up. What you mean? <laughs> I just love the kid. So I went to his mom. His mom and his mom was cool. I went to his mom. I'm like, this your son trying to break up with me and da 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 da. da. So um, his mom actually pretty much reiterated his speech. Like <laughs> his mom pretty much said, not word from word, but pretty much agreed with her son. Like this man don't know. He's like my son. She's like my son 
don't know his left feet from his right feet. Like, you are amazing. He is going, please don't let him slow you down. Please don't let him hold you back. You, like, if you were my daughter, I would tell you to break up with this man and, and go buy a business and keep being great, right? So I was like, okay, well, <laughs> at that point, I was like, well, if his mom is <laughs> If his mom is telling me to break up with him, then I guess I ain't got no choice but to break up with him. So, you know, that was it. And I, that was the end of that relationship. And I was so sad, y'all. I was so sad. If all these things, you know, because when things are happening in the moment, you you don't understand. It, you know what I mean? I look back at it now and I'm grateful. Actually, like, not even now I'm grateful. I'm, I've been looking back at that moment like since it happened i'm like that was actually so sweet like that motivated me to keep going i've thought about that speech a lot of times throughout every time i'm down i'm like no that man told me he got (laughs) that man told me to keep going (laughs) i got him you know what i mean so uh, i'm actually grateful though i was super sad i'm grateful for that moment but that was my third boyfriend and then you know years went by some point in my life around 20 uh, 25 or something i actually got engaged y'all i'm gonna just skip over things and just get to that part i got engaged y'all that was another highlight of my life i think i was 20 i don't remember what age that's bad i don't mm. that's real bad but i got engaged it was a nice experience i'll be living for the experience okay honey listen <laughs> I be here for the experience. Like, I ain't finna say no to nobody ring. I said yes, honey. And I had me some three. I had three different diamonds on my finger. Hello. It was shaped like a crown. Okay. I love that ring. Um, And then things didn't work out. You know, this man decided to. I said yes to one man, y'all. And then he became a whole new man. He did like a 360. And I was like, okay. Bye-bye. I be on my Lori Harvey, y'all, because, listen, I'm not going to get stuck in nothing. This man started cussing me out. He went the verbal abusive route. And I'm like, listen, if you had even cussed me out repeatedly at any point before you asked me to marry you, I would have not. I would have never told you yes, because that's something from day one. As soon as I entered this, this dating game, my first experience was abuse. So I, from that first relationship, I'm not accepting that on no level no level so this man went from this sweet genuine kind best friend kind of guy proposed i said yes a couple of months later this man look you 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 effing this you effing this every every argument he cut i'm like wait a minute what is going on hello i'm a queen you will speak to me and address me like a queen because that's what you've been doing that's why i said yes i'm not saying yes to somebody that's gonna call me a b the b word every every second he's mad like that's craziness right so Anyway, that didn't work out. <laughs> that didn't work out. That was years after, though. That was years after the six-year high school boyfriend relationship thing. So then I got engaged. It didn't work out. When that didn't work out, though, I didn't realize how much of a toll that took on me. Actually, I be moving a little too fast um, with life sometimes. Like, I just drop things, and I do a different kind of healing is what it is. Because when my engagement didn't work out, I took a year of abstinence. So I took a year off. I was like, I don't even want to see men. I didn't have hatred for men, but I was a little disgusted because I'm like, why are you finna? Why are you finna do that? Like, who goes out their way to buy a ring? And that man probably couldn't afford. I don't know. He probably did afford it. I don't know. But who does that? And then all of a sudden now you're a new person like that's a waste of time and energy my time if you don't value your time that's the waste of my time and my energy right so i was just exhausted i was just tired I, like i just i was like i couldn't do it anymore so i took a whole year off y'all i was like and when i when i'm tired i'm just like i'm over it i'm not even i don't even want to see another dingling in my face <laughs> so i took a whole year of abstinence and then at the end i i took that time to really um heal as far as um when it comes to like uh getting closer with god that was the route i took so i wanted to be able to learn how to love myself and not like um and this is something i discovered along the way by the way i didn't take the abstinence and started discovering how to love myself immediately there's something i learned I, I took the abstinence and i learned along the way what i needed to do within that time so one of the things that i did was try to get as close to god as possible and i i believe i <laughs> i believe i did that i believe i i have i have a stronger relationship with god because of that 
one year of abstinent practicing getting to actually know myself so then after that year was over i was wrapping it up i was like you know what i was still tired of men actually after that year like i said i didn't focus on on the men part i focused on myself and getting to know myself and getting to know god so i was still tired of men after that and i just went in now but at that time now my mindset was i'm getting older so my parents are getting older also so i wanted a kid so i was like if i go back into the dating field i just want to have a kid i don't really care what happens because at this point it's just like i just got engaged and that like you know what i mean i, I don't even care anymore <laughs> like that's a bad way that's a bad attitude to have but i'm telling y'all that's how i went back in i went back in like i it don't matter what happened no more i ain't got no control over nothing let's go give me my baby okay <laughs> baby me please that was my whole energy so i went back and i actually i stopped my i um did a year of a abstinent and then like what like two months later i met my <laughs> I met my son father. It's like he was sitting there waiting for me to be done. So I met my son father. His he's um much older than me. So as soon as me and my son father met, we was on the same page. He's he's, he's a lot older than me actually. So he he didn't have a kid. He actually had one kid that was back home. Uh, the kid is like in his 20s late 20s at this time so this man actually just wanted a kid too so like i just shared with you guys because of my experience i was over the whole men thing i just wanted my son so i meet a guy he just wants a kid too perfect <laughs> i was like perfect let's do this right so me and my son father got together we had a baby we 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 did it we had a baby and beautiful experience because this is something we both wanted so he was there the whole time he did his best that he could do in his ways how he knew right so it was a great 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 lovely lovely experience i got to meet my baby boy and um and yeah that's about it i'm gonna actually i know y'all well we had some problems and i know i told y'all i was finna spill some tea y'all but i changed my mind i'm like i'm not finna sit here and talk bad about my son father y'all because Oh, child. We all know how them the baby daddies be, cause everybody be talking about baby mama. But y'all, y'all, y'all baby daddies, y'all be doing, y'all be. Mm. So, but I don't want to talk bad about him, cause my son gotta watch my show, y'all, and he gotta be proud of me. I don't want him. I don't want my son watching the show thinking mom don't like dad or mom is a hater. So I'ma keep it nice. I'ma keep it nice and sweet, okay? And over time, as the show goes on, over time. You guys will hear some OGs about my baby father drama, but I'm not gonna go ahead. I'm not. I cho I've chosen not to spill too much beans on that, simply because I want to honor my son. Okay, guys. So uh, that's it. And then me and my son father, because the core of the relationship was we both wanted a baby. Once the baby came, we started having problems, of course. And then we just decided, well, I decided, <laughs> I decided that we should break up because it wasn't that like why force it that was in the point was we wanted a baby so we got a baby that does raise the baby in love instead of trying to force what was never there right so that was my whole thing and i went into it looking at it as whatever anyway so i guess maybe that was a bad part but the core thing was the baby we got the baby so in my idea that was a <laughs> that's a success <laughs> that's a success like my son father loves this kid this man would die for his son like i couldn't ask for anything more literally you can't win it all right like i know people that baby father don't even want to see their kid so my son father will he would take somebody life in a split of a second for his son like he loved this man loves his son so i i can't wish for nothing more i'm grateful how it worked out i can't I, you can't win it all so um, but after that, yeah, um, after that, I got back into the dating game, y'all. <laughs> I got back into the dating game, and actually, that's that's the message for this story. The message for this story ha is uh, for this episode is going to be, like, my latest dating experience, y'all, because this is so different. OMG. I thought I was, I thought I don't seen it all. I thought I don't seen it all. I thought I don't heard it all, baby. But, no, now I'm a woman with a kid getting back into the dating world i didn't even look at you know what it is i don't be i just be <laughs> i just be going with the flow of life i don't really think about things until it hit me and then i'm like oh right so anywho i start talking to this guy we talking for a couple of minutes and a couple of months and everything is fine this guy knows my family knows my kids knows my son father knows everything 
this man all of a sudden gets up and he goes, um, I can't, I, I can't accept your kids as my own. This is, I, this is news to me, y'all. This, we've been talking for a while now. And this man just all of a sudden got up and said these words to me. And I was nothing but confused. Because, huh? What has been going on? I was just confused. So I'm like, okay, no, that's not going to work. I don't know what anybody else would have done. Because the situation, the situation is just is so, it's so different. Because he actually loved me. <laughs> And when I say that, people be like, no, he don't love you, girl. How he going to love you and, and can't accept your kids? I agree. That's the same question I'm asking. You can't love me and not accept my kids because my kids come with me, right? So that has been like a little predicament for me. And I had a conversation like with my mother, with other people about it. My mother would be like, that's actually, I mean, you're the kind of woman who's looking at it uh, differently. But another woman would look at it as another woman could accept that. Because, like I said, this man loved me, loved me wholeheartedly. There's no, nothing I can put before him. I want to give a sample of how he displayed his love, but I, I don't want to be too specific with him. But some of my friends already know. <laughs> some of my friends already know the vibe. But this man loved me, y'all. He loved me, loved me, loved me. Everybody who has ever seen us together can feel the love. It was genuine. It was kind. He's not a bad person. But he's just told me, like, straight up, like, I cannot accept your kids as my own. And just that that was it for me. I didn't know what else to do after that. I was like, okay, so then we got uh, we gotta break up because I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to love me but not accept my kids. These people are literally a part of me. And then, more importantly, one of my kids are not biologically mine. My daughter is actually my niece. So if you're having problem with accepting children you are definitely gonna have a problem with accepting her and that's that's the biggest ref that is screaming red flag all over it like i i can never put her in a situation where somebody don't accept her right i can never put my son in a situation where somebody don't accept him and i think i chose that to be the message for the show the message is do not pick i mean do what you want, but <laughs> do what you want. But I don't think we should be picking men over our kids. Like, this is bad because the the thing the things that ran through my head when this man told me this was like I'm trying to figure out like so how's that gonna work if you don't accept my kids? So if we get if I, we keep dating and I have more kids, so you gonna separate them? You gonna treat your like you know, if I have more kids for you you're going to treat your kids differently than you treat my two kids before? You know what I mean? And I start asking myself these questions, and I start realizing I'm like, oh, yeah, I have seen situations where men treat kids differently. But, like, honey, I felt insulted because I'm like, why would you even ask me that? Did I give you the vibe that I was the kind of woman that would be okay with that kind of thing? A little bit of me felt like, I did bad. A little bit of me. I was like, I think I, sh I think I did bad. I think a little bit of this is my fault. You know what I mean? Like, did I give this man, like, was I sitting in his face a little too much? And I gave him the idea that I would be cool with this. You know what I mean? Because one of my friends was like, oh, man, one of my friends loved him so much, us together. She was like, he should have kept that and went to the grave. <laughs> she he was like, she should have, he should have never said that. I'm like, I know, right? But. Of course, I'm, I'm actually grateful he said it because I ended it right there, y'all. Because don't put these kids through nothing. Like, listen, you're a grown man. You're a grown man. If you can't accept kids, my kids, then I can't be with you because your kids come with you. And that's what people don't realize when men say these things. And as a female, we accept it because I, I believe it's selfish. If I would have took that and been like, oh, this guy loved me. Um, so, you know what I mean? that's enough reason for me to keep dating him even though he don't accept my kids that would have been selfish on my part because then my kids are going to grow up in a household where they're going to be um treated differently then they're going to be wondering their whole life like oh how come dad don't treat me the same way he treat my other sister and brother and those are questions that no kids should have to grow up with you know what i mean i don't want my kids to be growing up in a confusing environment and i don't think that any of us should put our kids through that and that that's just that's you know what i mean like i've had this conversation with like my clients with a whole bunch of people and every time the message is different i've had people that actually grew up 
in this situation where they had stepfathers who treated them differently and they had to learn to um, live with that because that's just what it was. They wasn't their father. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. I don't think, like, us as parents, we don't see how much damage we do to our kids, but that's one of them. Like, choosing a, a man over your kids and whatever you're going to put that kid through, that's very selfish. That's one of the things that we have to consider. And men, I, this is for men and women, actually, because I'm sure they're, you know what I mean? I don't like to sound sexist and, like, attack men or something. This is for women, too. Then I'm sure there's a woman out there that's like, I ain't finna be no baby mom to his kid, right? Like, if you if that's how you feel, though, cool. Then don't. Don't do that, right? But don't date a person that have kids and you have problems with kids. That don't make no sense. Like, my situation was confusing to me because I'm like, you knew I had kids for, you knew I had kids for so many months. You knew I had kids before we started dating. So how come now all of a sudden is a problem with for you to accept my kids right so uh, that was just it for me and that was the biggest red flag and i couldn't move forward and now um i have to think about that now every time i'm like oh snoop now i'm a woman dating with kids so not only have i have to be uh, not only do i have to ask guys like um did you finna hit me <laughs> you finna cuss me out right every day <laughs> you finna play my games with me you know I, all those questions i gotta ask now like you accept my kids you got problem with kids like oh why y'all you why y'all put women through don't put us through that Men, women don't put no man through that says um bro don't put no woman through that do not ask no woman to pick you over her child that's just that is the most to me that was the most selfish thing i could ever <laughs> i could ever experience now that's the first question on the table before i even start talking to any man do you got problem with kids? Because I got me some kids. I love my kids. I ain't got no problem having no kids for you. But the ones I got now, they are my heartbeat. So you know, if you got problem with them, you can, you can get the step in. You can go, <laughs> you can go about your business, y'all. And so that's the message for this episode. Episode 4, QC, don't pick no man or no woman over your kids. They don't deserve it. That's selfish. And that's all I got to say for y'all today. <laughs> I'm going to end it. That's on period. That's on period. That's the end of the, the episode. Don't pick no man or no woman over your kids. Don't do it. It's not good for the mental health, for the mental well-being of your children. Don't do it. All right? I love you guys. I'll see you guys next time on QC. Mwah.